Hi, everyone. All right. So welcome to our uh, virtual farm field trip at Days End Farm Horse Rescue. I am so happy to have everyone with us. My name is Shannon Brown. Um, I am the elementary education director with MAFE, and I am thrilled to have you join us at Days End Farm. Um, I'm going to be sharing my screen in just a second to show you a couple of quick things about Days End uh, before we get started with our tour. So let me do that. That real quick. All right. So, whoops, excuse me. There we go. Um, so, welcome, welcome to Days End Farm and uh, Days End Farm Horse Rescue. Um, we are going to be taking a look at uh, a lot of the great things that they do here, um, a sneak peek at horse rescue in general. Um, all of the natural human and capital resources uh, that go into running a farm. We're going to talk about wants and needs. Um, we'll look at uh, some of the careers involved. Um, and I am so excited to have everyone with us. So Days End Farm is actually located about halfway between Frederick and Baltimore City. Um, and we are, it's funny enough, because we actually have about a thousand students joining this uh, live virtual farm field trip today from all across the state of Maryland. Um, so you may even see your town or your county here on this map, uh, and you may live closer to Day's End than maybe you previously realized. So welcome, 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 everyone. I am going to come back to our, um, our video screen here for just a second, and I am going to introduce... Nikki Wetzelberger. Nikki Wetzelberger is the Community Outreach Director at Days End Farm, um, and she is a wonderful, wonderful person to get to know, and she's going to share all kinds of great things about what happens at Days End Farm. Hi, Nikki. Hello. Can you see me? Yes, we can see you. Awesome. Hi. Well, welcome, everyone. Welcome to my happy place, Days End Farm Horse Rescue. We are on 58 acres of beautiful forever farmland in Howard County. Um, for anyone that hasn't been to a rescue, you're in for a treat today. So we have about 70 horses in our care. The horses come to us that have been abused and neglected, which means they're sick when they first arrive. So our farm is very much like a horse hospital. We help horses become healthy again and then ultimately find them homes. So for anyone watching, if you have adopted a cat or a dog or visited a shelter, and adopted another animal we're very similar to that so we help people find their horses and, and get adopted that's wonderful thank you for sharing that nikki now before we really get into the tour i do want to share with everybody um we are live we are live on a farm um which means that we have a ton of things that um you know we're kind of considering as we're going through here um so please be patient as we transition from outdoors to indoors um there may be some little transition times or little glitches in between um but if you just hang with us for a few seconds they should be ironed out as we transition from space to space um, so just be patient with us. Um, it's kind of one of the pitfalls of going live, but we are so excited to bring this to you. Um, so we're going to get started with Nikki in our, um, uh, with our tack room. Nikki, do you want to head over to the tack room and kind of show us a little bit about what's over there? Yeah. So I'd love for you all to come around and let's see the people and the horses we meet along the way today. So as we get started, this is our tack room which is really important uh, for our trainers, which is one of the careers here at the farm. So all of the equipment we see in the tack room today, our trainers use and our barn staff and volunteers use to help take care of the horses. Um, so as we walk down, I also want you to be thinking about the sizes of horses, what types of horses we have at the farm, um, what types of horses you might see today. Um, so if you come with me, I mean, look at this, we have, Tiny little halters here for foals. So look at this. You can imagine the horse that has this on. So it goes on their head um, all the way down to really large halters. So just visualize the types of horses you're going to be meeting today. Um, our rescue is all breeds. Um, so we do have a variety of types of horses at our, our rescue. And Nikki, am down. I right that we're yes. going to meet some of those horses later on at the end of our tour? Yes, we're going to meet some of them. Some of my favorite ones I want to share with everyone today. Wonderful. Um, here are some bits on the wall. Um, and this is used when we're riding the horses. So I talked a little bit about our trainers and their job um, is to help 
teach the horses different things. So whether it's a different discipline like riding English or Western, which you're gonna learn more about, um, or something as simple as picking up their feet um, or grooming the horses, they're helping to teach the horses and help them be comfortable in their environment. So as we come down, uh, these are all our grooming supplies. So lots of things, our horses are groomed every single day here. They get lots of love and lots of cuddles. Um, so we have fun things like curry combs that allow us to um, bend and maneuver around like the horse's legs and get all of the dirt off of them. And then different types of brushes. Now, if you were here with me right now, you would be feeling this. And this is a really hard brush. It's really hard bristles. Again, we're getting all of that dirt off of them. Um, and then this here is really nice. And these bristles are very, very soft. It's kind of like conditioner for their coat and it helps it, uh, the coat shine. And again, brushing all of the dirt and excess hair off. So these tools are used every day when we're grooming the horses. So uh, volunteers, groups that come to our farm, barn staff. And as we make our way down, you have your kits that you put everything in. Um, and different brushes. Shannon, can you guess what this would be for? Ooh, that's tricky. That one's smaller than the other ones. Maybe it's used around their heads, I'm not sure. Yes, yep, yeah, we can use this around their face, uh, again, to remove any dirt. And then some hair brushes for their beautiful manes and tails. And while we're here, I have something that is the most important tool that you have in your grooming kit. And I want you to brainstorm and think, what could this odd tool be? What would we use it for? Why is it so important? And we're going to share that at the end. That's wonderful. So there's like a hook on the end of it and a brush on that? Yeah, a hook and a brush. Ooh, that's curious. I'm wondering what that's going to be for. We'll take a look at the end. So get your guesses in your mind, folks, and we will take a look at the end of our tour. We'll let you know what that tool is used for. And now welcome to our tack room. So you will see lots of different types of pedals, helmets. If you're riding, just like riding a bike, you have to have a helmet on. Um, and we have different types of saddles. So Western saddles here um, with big horns on it. That's like the biggest way to tell the difference between the English saddle and the Western saddle, which are just two different types of riding disciplines. Um, and then on the wall here are bridles and the bridles go on the horse's head and help um, the rider control the horse. So it's kind of like a steering wheel for the horse. So the trainer can use their legs um, and the bridle when they're riding. But I have two sitting out here today. We have two very special bridles for very special horses. This is Barney's bridle and this is Nuggets. Now look at them compared to each other. I mean, what do wow. you think about these horses? So I definitely again, think they're going to be two different sizes. I can't wait to meet them later. Yes. Yeah, so this is their tack of when they're being ridden. Okay. If you want, we can go back out into the sunshine. Yes. Let's head back out. So our tack room, all the equipment, I, I didn't realize there was that much equipment being used um, just to take care of a horse on a day-to-day -day basis. It's pretty amazing um, how organized uh, you all keep it and make sure that, you know, you, your trainers know where everything is for every single horse. That's incredible. Yeah. And a lot of the stuff you're seeing today is actually donated to the farm. Also, you know, since we're a nonprofit, we have lots of people supporting us. So a lot of the stuff from the halters and lead ropes to saddles um, are all donations from the public, which is awesome too. That's wonderful. That's so important. Oh, wow. What's being set up here? So this is lunch. Who's hungry? It's lunchtime. Um, so right now you are seeing Michael, who's one of our barn staff members, and he is getting the horse's lunch ready. Michael, can you tell us about, you know, what you're doing? All right. I am watering down the horse's feed uh, for this afternoon. Uh, this should be all of our geldings and a handful of mares. Ooh, gelding. What's a gelding? Uh, gelding is a male horse, a boy horse, who has been essentially neutered. Okay. <laughs> uh, so here at the farm. We, if they if they come in stallions, we always make sure we uh we we fix them. Uh, <laughs> have yellow. Yep. Yeah. So this is their food. Yes, this is their food. Uh, each horse gets a bear. 
different uh, tailor-made diet uh, specific for that horse. It can range anywhere from an eighth pound of a very light, uh, almost like diet grain, like a filler kind of thing, uh, to one of our, Barney, one of our big old draft horses gets about four, over four pounds of grain when everything's all said and done. So we talked a little bit about Barney and Nugget, and I want us to keep giving you clues along the way today. So this is Barney's food. I want you to see, I'm making a muscle holding this up. <laughs> and this is Nugget's food, which is very light. So Barney's is really heavy. It's about this full, half of the bucket. And then Nugget's is near the bottom. It's, it's really just um, a little bit of grain in there. So why Maybe do you water the feed down, Michael? Oh, Michael, I can't hear you. The reason we water the feed uh, actually has to do with the horse's safety. Uh, watering a dry, dry grain uh, expands when you water it down. And so if you feed a horse just dry, out of the bag grain, there's the chance that they could actually choke on it. So it's very important that uh, we water it down, make it kind of like an oatmeal-like consistency. Horses can choke just like people? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, they're a little different in the way that generally they can still they can still breathe even if they are choking. They usually are able to clear the choke when they're uh, on their own, but occasionally you have to you have to get the vet out, okay. help you out and help you clear it. But then this helps you eliminate that risk. Yes. Okay. Yes. You think about it. We have something in the range of about fifty horses here on the property. So each one of those horses have, has the chance to choke at any given meal, but by watering down all the grain, everybody's feed, uh, to a thin oatmeal-like consistency, it lessens that chance by far so they, so they don't end up choking on it and we don't have to. Yeah. We don't have yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And also it's really helpful for older horses. Uh, older horses tend to, they're, like, they're a little older, like, eight, yeah. uh, their teeth tend to wear, they kind of go, it's a lot easier for them to, they basically drink it. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thank that you. is great information. Thank you so much. Um, so quick question for you, Nikki. Um, I know you were talking about, you know, how important it is that um, all of the horses get the food that they need. What are, when you're talking about, you know, living things, all living things have wants and needs, you know, humans have wants and needs. Um, what are some of the needs of a horse um, that every horse needs no matter what? Well, I'd like everyone listening right now to put on your thinking caps and brainstorm, brainstorm for me. What are things that you need to live versus what are things that you want to live? So things that you need, you can't survive without. So I'm betting everyone's yelling out right now in their classrooms, food, water, shelter. Those are three easy ones. Horses also need fresh air. They're very big animals. They need exercise. They need space to, to run. And they also need medical care. So those are the six things that a horse um needs in order to survive. Now, things that they want, right? They love to be groomed. They love uh, to be cared for. Um, some of our horses have shoes, different things like that, but those would be a want versus a need where they have to have it in order to survive. So we're Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'm going to pause right? you for just a second too, because I want to, um, I want to make a connection back to schools um, because you were talking about the food that you, that you were mixing for each horse. And we saw all of those buckets laid out and they all had different amounts of food, different types of food. Um, and it really makes me think back to, you know, like students in school, you know, when you're in school, you know, your teacher works really hard to make sure that you get the instruction and the things you need to learn. Um, but sometimes it looks different depending on, you know, where you are as a student. Sometimes if you're learning a new skill, it might take you a little bit longer to understand it. It might take you, you, you might learn it really quickly. Um, so you're getting what you need, but it might not always look like what everyone else in your classroom is getting. Um, you know, I think some, some folks have heard, um, you know, the phrase, you get what you get, and you don't get upset, but that's not really the case here, you know, at Day's End Farm. And I know um, as far as students go too, you get what you need when you're, when you're, you know, in school and learning. So is that the same case with the horses? They get what they need, you know, along their path at Day's End? 
Yes, and we didn't go into the feed room, unfor unfortunately, being on a, a farm, the service isn't great in there. Um, but if we went in, you would just see lots of trash cans with sealed lids and it's keeping the grain stored um, dry and away from rodents. There is lots of different types of grains and supplements for that exact thing. Every horse here has its own needs in order for them to be healthy, we give them that. So even though we have upwards of 50, closer to 70 horses at the farm now, every horse gets a recipe for success, what they need. So you saw Barney had almost a half of a bucket full and nuggets, the bottom was just full. That's because their dietary needs are so different. Barney needs more calories. Why? Think about that. Why would he need more? Um, and then Nugget needs a lot less to be healthy and maintain his body weight. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. So I know we're going to head into the main barn um, in just a minute. So in this new space we're going into, um, first of all, there may be a little transition time um, as the uh, internet adjusts and whatnot. Oh, Nikki, did you have something you want to share before we do that? Yes. Yeah, so right now, this is a treat. I didn't know that they were going to still be here. So you're ah. actually seeing our farriers. So this is a farriers trailer. Uh, so we have two farriers that come bi-weekly here. Our horses need their feet trimmed every six to eight weeks. Um, so a farrier is another really important career and something that is critical to the horses being healthy. So this is his uh, toolkit. Um, and every week, you know, he, he, both of our farriers, um, male or female, come and, and help us take care of, of the horse's feet. So a horse's hoof grows about a quarter of an inch a month, and they grow an entire new hoof about once every year. So every six to eight weeks, they have to have their feet trimmed um, to maintain healthy hooves. Is that kind of like trimming your fingernails if they get too long? Yes. So a uh, horse's hoof continues to grow. Um, so it's really important that you keep it healthy and, and keep it short so they can walk or run and move um, pain-free. Wonderful. Oh, and, and as we come in here, we're going to be on the lookout, folks. Um, everyone, just keep an eye out for things like our human resources, people who are doing jobs. I see one right here. Our natural resources, things that come from nature, um, many of them from farms. And keep an eye out, too, for some capital resources, things that are made by people from these natural resources. So we're going to keep an eye out for those as we go through this next part. So actually, we have uh, barn staff here. This is Carrie today. Here, I will, uh, did you talk into the headset here? What are you doing, Carrie? So I just did um, some vital signs on our great ambassador horse nugget. Okay. And I checked his gut sounds because he makes little rumbly sounds just like our stomachs do. Um, and the way horses digest food, we wanna make sure it's digesting properly. So we listen for those sounds. Okay. I checked his breathing and see his stomach moving up and down just to make sure it wasn't too fast. I also checked his heart rate, which if you take your stethoscope right here and put it right in here behind his elbow, you can hear his heartbeat. Okay. And so his heartbeat was normal. And the next thing I'm going to do is check his temperature. Okay. And so your, your job as a barn staff is kind of like a vet tech, really. You're maintaining the horse's health and checking them yes. every day. Yep. We're checking them every day. Um, Typically, those are the horses that are in our rehabilitation program and the real skinny ones. Okay. Nugget here just seemed a little bit off this morning, so we wanted to double check him and make sure everything was looking good. Okay. So far, he's okay. I think he might have been just a little <laughs> scared of the barrier. <laughs> so now, Nikki, do you all check um, the horses every single day? Yes. Yeah, so um, Carrie's checking Nugget's temperature right now. Um, so, yes, even though we have you know, 70 horses at the farm, every horse comes in every single day and they're groomed. And at that time, we're able to visually see them and get our hands on them to make sure that there's no wounds or injuries. They're not sick. And if there's, they're acting a little bit funny, even though we have all of these horses, barn staff know the horses like better than anyone. Like they're their own pets. Like, you know, your cat or your dog. Um, so if the horse is a little off, then we can bring them in, do a vitals check on them and monitor them as needed. And if we need to, we can call the veterinarian and have them come out um, to also evaluate the horse. I didn't realize there were so many careers. Our lovely little sheet here is I'm going to check um, Nugget's gums. So you'll get to see his teeth. Oh. The 
way that we do this is we want to check his gums to make sure that they're. I'm sorry, we're going to check his gums to make sure they're nice and pink and moist. So I'm just gonna lift up his lip. Oh, look at those teeth. Yeah, and I'm gonna feel it, make sure it's moist. And then I'm gonna press on it and see how long it takes for my thumbprint to come back. Okay. Yeah, those are nuggets. <laughs> Cheese. <laughs> he looks healthy to me. I taste it. <laughs> oh, great, thank you. That's wonderful. Nikki, can I ask you a quick question? Because we had some questions come in from a couple of classes, and um, I think one of them is really relevant here. Um, Miss Snowden's kindergarten class out at Winfield Elementary, um, one of her students was asking, how do you know if a horse is hurt um, or if maybe a bone is broken? How can you tell that maybe a horse is just not feeling right? Um, so, Carrie, our question is, how do we know when our horses aren't feeling okay and if they're hurt? So if they're hurt, you might, if they're hurt, you might see them kind of limping a little bit and maybe they've hurt their foot or their leg. Um, if they're just not feeling well, you might see them stop eating. They might be real kind of dumpy, you know, how when you feel sick that you're, you're real tired and you just don't have a lot of energy. So we're always watching to make sure if we see anything like that. Okay. So... So similar to if you're not feeling well and your parents know that you're sick, it's very similar to the horses. Um, they just won't act like themselves. So sometimes the horses are first to come in for lunch. And so let's say Nugget's always first in and one day he's the last in. Our staff are going to go, you know what? He's not acting right. He's always first in. So then they'll check him. Um, but yeah, great question. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, so I know we're going to head a little bit more into the barn. Um, is there anything in any of the stalls or any of the equipment um, or bedding or anything you can show us that, uh, that the horses um, kind of interact with every day when they're in the barn? Yeah, so this is our main barn. We have 18 stalls and it's beautiful right now because it's empty. So our horses want to be out in the fields. That's where they're happiest. That's where they're in their herds with their other friends. Um, so there aren't horses in right now, which is great. Horses in means that they're sick or there's a reason why they're here. Um, but I do want to share with you our sling stall, which is a really, really important stall at our farm. So welcome to the stall where dozens of lives are saved. Like this stall, so many horses. So are, can you hear me? Yes, you're good. Keep going. Okay. So, so many horses lives have been saved in this very stall. So things I would like to share with you and point out in our sling stall, it's kind of like a hospital room for horses. So our sickest horses will be kept and cared for in this stall above me. What do you notice? What is different here? This huge beam. So we had volunteers actually made this beam for us. Um, and on this beam supports our Anderson sling and our horses that are in critical condition. Another thing I'd like to share is this hook here allows us to hang IVs um, for horses in critical care. So the Anderson sling, if anyone's listening, have you broken an arm or had a friend or family member that broke an arm and they had to keep their arm in a cast in a sling? It's similar. The Anderson sling would support the horse and provide a place for them to heal. If they're standing here and they are off balance, the sling will catch them so they don't fall down. Um, it allows them the opportunity to rest into it. So it provides the support that they need. So we have had a horse in this stall for nine weeks. He made a full recovery. His name is Zodiac. Um, but just think like, how would it feel? What would you be thinking if you were in the stall for nine weeks fighting for your life? Um, I can't tell you the number of horses that um, their lives have, have changed in this very place right here. Uh, lots of lives saved. So it's really special. But when we're in the stall, Let's look at those, um, the six needs, right? What do you see? What do you see in, in this stall with me? I hope you're yelling out that you see hay. Um, so we feed our horses uh, different types of hay, first and second cuttings of hay, depending upon their needs and, and where they're at in life or rehab. Um, what else do you see? 
water bucket. So, you know, our motto is if you wouldn't drink it, we don't want our horses to drink it. So the water buckets are scrubs and clean and fresh water given every day. Um, feed pan. So we have our feed bucket, this feed pan down here. This is called a mineral block. So just like you and I, horses also need additional nutrients that they don't always get from their forage or their feed. So with this mineral block in their stall, they can kind of self-regulate um, what they need and look at as, as needed. And so sometimes they need a little more, sometimes they need a little bit less, just like you and I. That's great. Now, Nikki, can I ask you real quick, because we were talking earlier, um, and if we can stay in the Anderson stall for just a second, we were talking earlier about like the capital resources, the natural resources. Now I know I saw hay in there. Um, is the hay that's in those feed bags, those feed bags being a capital resource because they're made by humans, um, the hay or the, the feed food that's in there for them, is that different than what's on the in that bucket and what's on the ground? Can you tell me a little bit about the difference between those? So the hay nets are really great for us. Then, you know, I'm going to compare this to giving your dog a Kong. Um, so it slows the horses down. So some of our horses will just engorge themselves with hay and just eat, eat, eat. So if they're in the stall for a prolonged period, say overnight for eight to 12 hours, this slows them down. So they'll have lay hay for longer, which is important for their digestive system. Horses being grazing animals and prey animals are constantly, they're designed to be eating all of the time. Um, so this slows them down while they're eating. It also just engages them like a, a Kong for a dog, which is the thing that you put treats into. Um, and then this hay here, I'm guessing was just a little bit of excess hay uh, that we had um, sitting out in the main barn entrance that we didn't want to go to waste. And then what's on the ground so that the horse is comfortable? Oh, so this is bedding. Um, so we have sawdust here. Um, and so, yeah, this bedding again is just to help make the horses comfortable. Um, it also absor absorbs urine. So we're gonna walk out and learn a little more about waste, but horses eat 10 to 20 pounds of grass or hay, different types of forage a day. They drink 10 gallons of water. So with all of that going in, you have to be thinking there is a lot of waste. Um, so a horse, urinates two and a half gallons of uh, urine a day. So this helps to absorb that as well. Um, and then talking about manure, as we walk out, you'll see how we store it. They have about 30 pounds of uh, manure waste a day. Now, Nikki, why don't you just throw that manure in the trash can like you would picking up after a dog? <laughs> um, so if you can see behind me, we actually have our operations manager, which is another career, operations manager helped to maintain um, all of the barns, equipment, the, the land here. Um, so Tori right now is on our tractor moving manure around. So every week we have this dumpster and another farmer comes and takes um, the manure from this dumpster and it's actually taken to their farm and it's composted there. Um, but it's really important that you manage it, one, to maintain the horse's health, people health. As you look behind us, our fields, um, they have to be drugged different times and picked. Again, managing all of that manure. And you have to think, right, you have water runoff and storms come through. So you have all of this runoff that goes into the waterways and we have to be responsible um, and manage our waste and what's going into the waterways and affecting things like the Chesapeake Bay. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, that's an important thing that um, I think a lot of folks don't realize how much manure storage and, and um, you know, uh, that practice is really important on a farm because so many farms, especially here in Maryland, um, are either on waterways or near waterways um, that we don't want any extra nutrients that might be in the waste to get into that water. So I'm really glad to see how you all um, manage that on your farm. That's wonderful. Um, so is there any other kind of farming practices that you all manage other than the manure storage? Do you have anything else that kind of keeps everything um, healthy and safe on your farm? Yeah, so as you look out, I mean, you'll see lots of fencing. So that keeps horses out of areas where there might be, you know, runoff ponds or streams or creeks that would impact the water quality, um, particularly going to the Chesapeake Bay. So fencing is keeping horses out of different areas. Um, and it also allows us to grow grass. So yes, we are a horse rescue and we have all of these horses we take care of, but we're also grass farmers. And it's really important that we're growing grass. So we have a nutrient management plan, plan that we follow every year um, and give our soils and the grasses the nutrients they need 
to help the grass grow, to maintain um, the soil and make sure the soil is also healthy for growing grass. So our two fields here you're seeing, we have a field that we call grazing, and then we have a field that we call sacrifice field. A sacrifice field is where horses that don't need a lot of lush grass, they don't need the extra grass to maintain their body weight, will live on the sacrifice field. And then it's also a place we can put additional horses if we need to give some of our other fields a break and allow the grass some time to grow. So it's really important when you're looking around, like there are so many different ways that we are helping to grow grass, um, manage runoff, manage waste, um, and keep also keep the horses healthy. That's great. There's so many. That's one of the things that I think um, we, we, we often forget about is just the management of our natural resources that happens on all these, um, these farmlands. So thank you for sharing that. That's wonderful. Um, so as we're walking towards, um, you know, out to the next uh, area, I know we've seen a lot of folks, a lot of different careers. We had our barn staff um, that were helping with the horse health. Um, we had folks that were um, helping with the feed. You have obviously your veterinarians, your farriers. Um, are there any other folks that work directly with the horses that you'd like to share about? So our equine um, health manager is so important. She is in charge of making sure all of these horses are healthy every day, which is a really big task. So you will see her out um, at feed times, getting your hands on the horses, which is called body condition scoring, making sure that they're a good body weight, she is the one that is changing all of the meal plans as the horse ages, right? Just like people, their needs change. So they might need different things added to their meals, different medicines to stay healthy. Um, and it's constantly changing. So our equine health manager, she has a really vital role in maintaining the health of the entire herd, moving horses off different fields to keep the grass growing. Um, she has a big job here, which is really important. Wonderful. Oh, I see some friends. I think we've been waiting for this moment behind you. Who do we have? I would love for you to meet some of my best friends here today. So we have a wide variety of horses. So we have Vinny here, who is um, a miniature horse. He is around 400 pounds. He's three years old. Um, and he, he's, he's a special horse. He actually visits schools and nursing homes. He's gone to libraries before. When things open up again, we would love for Vinny to come and visit you in your classes. That would be wonderful. Now, you said 400 pounds and he's that little? Yes, I know. He's, he's so little, isn't he? That's I can incredible. almost put him in my car. <laughs> <laughs> now, who's behind Vinny? So this is Nugget. So we saw Nugget in the barn, but we were also looking at Nugget's um, tack earlier. We saw what he eats. Um, so Nugget is a halflinger, so a different type of breed. He is 20 years old um, and he weighs about 700 pounds. Wow. Now I had another question um, from Miss Snowden's students. They had asked, you know, for students who have never actually seen a horse in person or been near a horse, I see that you keep running your hands down the back of the horses. They were wondering, what does that horse actually feel like when you touch it? Is it? Does it feel like a dog's fur? Does it feel like a cat's fur? Is it totally different? How does that horse feel? Um, so they're really soft. Um, I, the one thing I wish I could describe, but you're going to all have to come out and I invite you all to come out and smell a horse. It is a, something special that you can't bottle up. You can't really describe it. There's a certain smell to a horse um, that is uh, really special. The reason why a lot of people come here is just to smell them. But I can tell you they're really soft. Um, he is shedding right now. So horses have winter coats. So you can see there's hair coming off of him. He grows a winter coat to keep him uh, warm in the winter when it's snowing. They're designed for all elements and happiest when they're out in the field. So winter coat is really important. But then in the summer heat, especially in Maryland, it's really important that the horses shed that winter coat. Um, so he's shedding right now, but he's really soft. Um, a healthy horse would have a really nice soft coat. It wouldn't be hard or brittle. Um, no bumps or anything like that. If you felt something, then that would be something to alert to one of our barn staff members. Wonderful. Thank you. What are they munching on right now as well? So they're eating hay. Like I said, horses eat 10 to 20 uh, pounds of forage and hay a day. Um, 
which is a lot. And I mean, they're, they're grazing animals. So we can talk a little bit about prey predator. So a horse's eyes, right, are on the side of their heads. Um, my eyes and your eyes are on the front, right? We're predators and a horse is a prey animal, which means they're also grazing animals. So they're designed to be eating all day. And with the, the eyes on the side of their head, what does that allow them to do? How is that different than a human's eyes? So when you come to our farm, and I hope that you all do, um, there are two places that we teach that you never approach a horse. They can almost see a full circle around them because their eyes are on the side of their heads, but they also just have two blind spots. So Nugget can see us all around him, but if I'm standing directly behind him, or in front of him, those are his two blind spots where he can't see, but the eyes on the side of the head enable them to always be like looking and observing their surroundings. Um, especially if you think about wild horses, you know, what they perceive as dangerous so that they can run away. Wonderful. Now, um, before we meet our last horse, who I know has some really special stories about that one, um, I do want to reveal, I know you had that tool tucked in the back of your pocket, um, that we were all wondering it had a hook on it, had a brush on it, it fits in the pocket, and we were wondering what on earth is that tool. So Nikki, can you reveal that to us so we can check our predictions? Yes, so this is a hoof pick, which is so important. Um, we use a hoof pick every day, and I'm going to ask Nugget here to pick his foot up for me without dropping the headset. Oh, so you can see right now there's a little bit of mud, a, a, some small stones. So in maintaining the horse's health, we also need to maintain their hoof health. So we clean their feet out every day, which is exactly what I'm doing using this curved piece of metal here. Um, you can also brush and we want to get any mud stones out keeping the hooves nice and dry and clear of anything. Um, it also allows you to check the bottom of their hoof if you see any wounds um, or any issues that might need to be addressed and you can catch it early on. Wonderful, that is a great tool. I bet every probably pretty much everyone at your farm has that in their pocket. All right, so yes. it looks like we have one more horse we'd like to meet and significantly larger than our last two that we met. Who is this? This is Officer Barney. He is very, very special. He's very dear to my heart and to everyone here. I'm sure there are some kids watching right now going, I've met Officer Barney before. Um, Officer Barney has literally changed the lives of thousands of people. His entire life has been dedicated to the service of others. The first six years of his life, uh, Barney was the lead uh, pool horse on an Amish plow team. So we've talked a lot about careers for people, but horses also have a lot of different careers. Um, and Barney's one of them. His entire life has been dedicated to helping and serving others. So he was a plow horse uh, for an Amish team. So you can imagine him pulling um, a plow and helping to plant things in, in a field. Um, and then he went to Baltimore City and was a part of the Mounted Police Unit. So for 12 years, Barney worked in Baltimore City. Um, he was at the Baltimore Ravens Super Bowl parades. He made appearances in The Wire. Um, he is really famous um, and has changed the lives of so many people. And then he came to day's end when he was 18. Um, he was just starting to get older and just like people, right? Horses change and his needs change. And he was starting to have some minor arthritis, which is pains in his joints. Um, and being a part of the police unit there, he has to walk miles every day um, on the cement and blacktop and concrete, which can be hard on his joints. So he was retired here, but he's a really smart horse and it was important that his brain was engaged. So here he is an equine ambassador and is teaching others just like you all about horses, responsible horse care. Um, some people ride him and groom him, you know, every day and learn, learn about horses and what makes them so special. That is great. Hi, Officer Barney. So we're so excited to see Officer Barney. Now I have a question for you because Officer Barney is so much taller than the other two horses. Um, how do you actually end up measuring horses to find out how tall they are? So we have something that we call a weight tape um, and it also has hands on it. So I would love for everyone to measure yourself in hands and determine what breed of horse you would be. Um, so hand is roughly four inches. So a weight tape, 
that would also measure their height goes from their hoof all the way up here uh, to their withers. And you would measure them and see how many hands tall they are. Um, Barney is a Belgian draft horse. He's roughly 1,500 pounds in weight. Uh, draft horses can go up to 2,200 pounds though. Wow, so measuring in hands, and you said that's approximately four inches high? Yep, yep. Wonderful. four so inches, yep. That's great. And I know on our website and Mace website, we do have a, um, a sheet that helps you um, see how to actually do that with your hands. And it shows several different breeds. Um, so you have Barney, you have Nugget. Um, is there anyone else kind of in that area that we can say hi to real quick? Yeah. So behind us, we have O'Malley. Um, he is a paint horse. He's beautiful. Um, O'Malley is 16 years old um, and weighs roughly 1,200 pounds, which is, he's very average for a horse. Very typical. That's great. Wow. You guys have pretty much the gamut of all the breeds and all the, you know, different um, sizes and shapes and colors and everything. Um, so one other quick question that we had um, before uh, we end today. Um, so as far as horse, horse breeds go, um, I know one of the questions we had was, are there different types of horses based on their color? Like do different breeds um, always have certain colors that match them? Yes, so there's lots of different breeds that have different colors. Um, so for instance, an Appaloosa is a, top, a popular type of horse and they would have a spotted pattern similar to like a Dalmatian. Um, so yes, you have lots of different horses that are different colors um, and have different patterns or markings that are very typical to, to their breed, similar to dogs, honestly, and, and cats. That's great. Um, now, as we're kind of wrapping everything up today, I know we had the opportunity to see, um, you know, some of the natural resources that you all have out on your farm. Um, we saw, you know, obviously the food, the water. Um, we also saw some of the capital resources with the shelter, the buckets, um, all of those great tools that you shared with us and the equipment for the horses. Um, and we also saw and met a lot of the folks who work and volunteer at the farm for our human resources. Um, we learned about horses' wants and needs. Um, but can you kind of give us, you know, if there was a takeaway um, that you wanted everyone to remember? Because I know you all are not just um, a farm, but you're a special type of farm that does horse rescue. Is there anything you'd like everyone to kind of take away from this um, in terms of animal care or um, making sure that they're looking out for animals um, no matter where they are? Yeah. And I mean, if you come with me, like these two horses are, are a prime example of this one last piece of um, information I'd like to share with you. So Vinny and Nugget are here today because someone called. So if you see something, um, if you see a horse that you don't think it looks the way it should, uh, if you don't see shelter or water, the different things we talked about today, you can talk to your parent. Every single county um, in Maryland and the surrounding states has something called animal control, which they're really important. They're fabulous people. And they are like police officers for animals. So any animal you see, if you don't think it's being cared for and needs help, talk to your parent and, you know, together you could call animal control and they could go out and, and check and see if that animal's okay. And if it's not, then they can help get the animal the care they need, whether it's just helping the owner or, you know, bringing the horse to a place like Days End Farm Horse Rescue. That is wonderful. Thank you so much, Nikki. Thank you for sharing all of your knowledge. Thank you for sharing all of the horses and all of the great information that you did with us. It was a wonderful virtual field trip. Um, obviously, I wish we could all be there with you. Um, I think the, the thousand plus students that were enrolled in our our field trip today probably wouldn't all fit at one time, but I know they're all excited to see what you all do. Um, and I hope they get a chance to visit you all. Thank you so much, Nikki, for sharing with us. Thank you. It's my pleasure. We're starting to open up by appointment to the farm. Um, so yeah, go to our website, defhr.org um, and schedule a tour and come out and meet us and our horses in person. We'd love to share this special place with you. Wonderful. Thank you. I'll see you later.